Well, welcome to my chicken coop. Today, I am not bringing you an episode about building the fern house, but I am bringing you an episode about keeping my super host status and repairing my chicken coop <laughs> because it has fallen apart. And Lord knows I can't keep guests happy with eggs when <gasps> there is no laying box attached to my coop any longer. This is a problem. Right there is one of the main problems. That is little baby Blackbud. She loves standing on top of the laying box and she naps there and she uses it as a springboard to get up on top of the chicken coop and then jump over on top of the goat shed and prance around on that roof. She is just craziness. But her weight and the water damage to the plywood has put an end to all those shenanigans and well, if there was a chicken in that box, when it went down, I'm sure it laid more than an egg. Now, it isn't for lack of other places to play. Baby just thinks she's a little privileged. She knows how to escape the goat pen, and we let her do that because she is not too destructive on my garden. So I make an exception for her. She gets to be out and about. But if she would just go in the pen, there's plenty of things for her to jump and climb on. She wouldn't have to use my laying box. Once upon a time, I would have bartered with somebody else to get my coop repaired, but it's occurred to me this is probably something I can tackle. I mean, at this point, I've started to build a cabin, and I've built a deck along the trail, so why couldn't I repair my chicken coop, right? These ladies are definitely part of the business around here. Guests love having fresh eggs from the chicken coop waiting for them in the cabin when they arrive. And for the folks that stay more than a couple days, I often will extend an offer for them to bring their kids over and collect their own eggs. It's absolutely magical to get to see kids, especially from urban and metropolitan areas that just don't get to do these things, reach in and pull out a warm egg and just discover what that feels like and what that experience is to meet and greet the chicken that made their breakfast. I love having these encounters. So Homesteading 101 says throw very little away and reuse as much as possible. So that's what we're doing today. I am going to strip old hardware off the old laying box and I am going to use up some plywood that I cut off the floor decking on the fern house this week to complete my repair. Tearing apart old junk. That's what it's all about. So I don't keep these chickens around to keep us fat, happy, and fed. I keep these chickens around because I have some other issues on this sunny hill, and that is the issue of sharing space with snakes. Yep, but getting chickens solved that problem for sure. Now these girls are out and about patrolling my yard and my garden and well down into the woods and the lane. and. I mean to tell you, it is so rare that we find a snake around here anymore, knock on wood, <laughs> that I am happy to provide these girls with some scratch brain shelter for the services that they provide me. These pieces here are still sturdy. They didn't get water damaged, but I got to get them off. I'm just going to put a flat, flat style lid on the end of my coop here and get rid of that laying box altogether. Problem is that with the water damage that does exist, some of these screws are kind of difficult getting out. I don't know that, it's that they're stripped as much as there's just nothing for them to go against with the wood being rotted. That was my problem getting the hinges back off that lid. Like... I just ended up prying it back off. So I've had a couple chicken coops up here over the years. All of them are designs that we built at home. We've done the chicken tractor thing. Now we have this more permanent structure. 
I have a couple words of advice I could lend to anybody who's thinking about getting chickens. One, build a coop that you can get access into the inside of fairly easy because there's going to be times when you need to get in your coop. So we have a door access on three sides of our coop so I can reach anywhere in there. So if the girls decide to lay eggs someplace I did not intend to them to do so, and they will do that, I can reach in and get them. I've had old birds die in the coop that I've had to get in and get. We've had repairs just like this that needed to happen. So you want to be able to get in and reach anything in your coop. Two, predator proof. I'll tell you what, do not underestimate the determination and the ingenuity of any of the common predators in your area. What do I deal with around here? I deal with raccoons, fishers, fox, I've had rats, weasels, I've had hawks. Um, so yeah, you need to be thinking what could be digging under my fence, what's going to crawl over my fence, what can reach through my fence, what can slip through a small area. Snakes can get in and eat the eggs, although I've never come across that and I'll tell you what, like I said, my girls are vicious. I'm pretty sure they would eat it. I mean, I saw one of my chickens eat a toad whole one time. I was shocked and horrified. It was like a little traumatic to be honest. Hmm, what other chicken advice do I have? Every chicken owner should own the Chicken Encyclopedia. This book is a must have. Under the letter P is a four page chart. It is a predator identification tool and I have used that part of the book more than any part of the book. It is so resourceful. It is so helpful. Go buy a copy. Here's a few more words I would share about chicken coops, advice for building chicken coops. Uh, cute chicken coops are for people, not for chickens. <laughs> I love seeing adorable chicken coops, things that look quaint in the backyard, things that are, you know, all like gingerbreadish and that kind of thing. Um, that's awesome. My hat's off to people that want to take the time into doing that and um, really making their chicken coop experience something special. However, that is for people, not for chickens. Honestly, you don't need to have something like that to have a happy and healthy flock. Um, all you need to do is to have a shelter that is practical and predator safe, really. And I think the best way to approach a chicken coop project is to look at what resources you have available to you and what materials are going to be the most cost effective for you. There's no sense really in eating million dollar dippy eggs. So what do you have available? What can you make with what you got? Um, what materials are affordable to you? Um, how can those things be mended together to make a reasonable shelter for your chickens? So, <clears throat> um, with that said, uh, you can get really creative with your designs by working with what you have. I've had numerous different um, designs of chicken coops over time, and my current one is pretty plain and straightforward. It's just this very large box attached to the back of a, a dog kennel that I got for free from somebody, actually, um, with a roof put over top of that and plenty of chicken wire around the nooks and crannies to make sure nothing, no predators can get in. That's how I ended up with what I got. Now, the second piece of advice I have is to give a lot of thought to how you're going to position your laying boxes. I have not always done a good job with this, and because of that, I have washed more eggs than what I should have washed over the years. Um, your laying boxes should be positioned so that they are away from where chickens are going to roost or just be strutting around and kicking up dirt and doing their chicken thing. Um, you want to be able to keep those eggs as clean as possible. So a pretty common design is to have like a laying box protruding from the side of the coop where you have a little lid where you can open it and reach in and get your eggs. That's pretty typical. Um, as you can see, mine fell off. <laughs> So, but there's other ways to create your laying boxes to keep your eggs clean. Um, you'll want to keep them away from any areas where you have a roost. Um, they will surely, you will get dirty eggs then. Why does it matter? If you can collect clean eggs, you are going to save yourself um, a lot of headache when it comes to egg storage. An egg that is clean, that is not soiled, does not need to be refrigerated for at least a week after you've collected it. So, 
um, that is a tremendous help when you have eggs coming out of your ears. It's also been helpful in the past when we've traveled and maybe stayed someplace where I knew I was going to be bringing some groceries along to cook. I can bring eggs with me and no worries if we're in the car for eight hours, the eggs are fine. I've also gifted eggs to the guest um, to take home with them. Uh, and they'll say, hey, I don't have a cooler. I really want to take these, but I can't. And I say, sure you can. You don't need a cooler. Um, you just need a safe place to put them in your car where they won't get smashed. So it's handy to be able to have that flexibility. If you're not familiar with raising chickens, you might be scratching your head as to how this works um, with the no refrigeration thing. When a chicken lays an egg, there is a biofilm that gets placed on that egg as it's exiting the chicken, and that biofilm um, fills in the porous surface of the eggshell and prevents uh, bacteria from being able to enter into the contents of that egg. So that's nature's perfect design um, to keep that egg healthy for the next 21 days or so um, if it were to be fertilized till it hatches into a chick. Now, the same goes for us, even if that is not a fertilized egg and we're collecting it. Um, if we do not disturb that biofilm, um, that same protection is still there. So if our egg is soiled and we start scrubbing and cleaning and processing our eggs, we scrub that biofilm right off. The shell now is a semi-permeable surface, which bacteria can go right through to the inside of the egg. And therefore, we have to refrigerate the egg in order to keep it food safe. That's how it works. Now I grabbed this piece of two by two scrap, whatever it was, and I'm throwing it in here um, to be a support. This is what my new door flap will actually be hung on. And I'm trying to get it up above where the water damage was so that I know the plywood will be nice and stout there. I leveled it on the inside and now I'm just gonna hold my level up to the outside to figure out um, exactly where the line is that my screws will be placed um, to attach that support into place. hold your horses here folks <laughs> I am taking my inch and a quarter screws and putting them straight through my three quarter inch plywood to hang it on my hinges which means I am screwing it tight into the plywood sheet behind it ah uh, sometimes I just get going too fast there is such a thing as too much of a good thing too much good motivation here I'm moving way too fast well so here's my situation I just screwed her tight into the whole coop I just screwed it tight into the whole coop. Yeah, do you have shorter, do you have little short stubby screws somewhere?
Do what? Man. <sighs> Here we go. Less than 465 million. Well, there you have it, folks. Now we know why I keep them around. Now I'm just throwing a coat of paint on. I don't think this shade red is the exact match. I don't know. It's been years since I painted this coupe, but this is the current red I have on all my other little outbuildings, so it'll be fine. It darkens up as it dries. The only other thing I'll need to do is to get a latch to put on the bottom. I have to grab that down at the hardware store, and then this repair has been made, and hopefully, this coop won't need anything out of me for several years yet again. Again, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate you tuning in and I hope that you learned some good information about chickens. I also hope that my attempt at repairing my chicken coop was a source of inspiration for a chicken coop build of your own. <laughs> Having chickens is fun. They are funny animals to watch and it sure helps with the super host status with Airbnb because my guests love fresh eggs. So thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment. That's always wonderful to hear from the folks that are watching this. I appreciate your input.